So then guys, the new M4 Macs are here, and specifically inside the new MacBook Pro, a lot of you guys are wondering, how more powerful is the M4 Pro than the M3 Pro? Well today, what I'm gonna do for you guys, I'm gonna do a review of specs, comparing the likes of a 14 inch M3 Pro MacBook Pro compared to the M4 Pro MacBook Pro. And let's get started then with this comparison. So then guys, what we've got here, we've got the new M4 Pro 14 inch MacBook Pro on the left, and then we've got the last year's generation, the MacBook Pro 14 inch M3 Pro on the right. And let's start then with this comparison because you'll find that quite a lot of the bits and pieces are very similar and the main changes are all to do with underneath the hood of the new M4 Pro MacBook Pro. So let's get started anyway. Both of these MacBook Pros have the same display type. They're both a mini LED Pro Motion display that was actually introduced in the likes of say the 14 inch and 16 inch M1 Pro and also the M1 Max. So these are exactly the same what we've got here. And with that then, that also means that the actual screen size is exactly the same on both these models. There's no difference here. Both of them are 14.2 inches big diagonal. So no difference here, here what you're gonna see. And then also the same with the actual screen resolution. Resolution. Both of them are 3024 by 1964 resolution. So again, no changes whatsoever. Exactly the same here in what you're going to get in screen resolution for both of these models. And then for pixels per inch, what that means is essentially you're getting 254 pixels per inch or PPI on both of these machines, what is pretty impressive for what you get here. But then for the actual display refresh rate, the great news is that both of these models are pro motion so that means they go up to 120 hertz on the refresh rate what is really really great to see and they go all the way down to 10 hertz refresh rate when needed so this is really really great to see but obviously you need to have the right apps to utilize this correctly but then moving on to the brightness and the true tone the great news is both these displays have true tone technology but this time round with the M4 Pro, we've actually got the SDR up to 1000 nits of brightness this time. And the XDR brightness is still 1600 nits, but this applies both to the M4 Pro and also the M3 Pro MacBook Pro this time around. But it's great to see that brightness has definitely been increased. But next of all is where things will change with the processor and the CPU. So what we've got now is the M4 Pro going up to an option of a 14 core CPU. And this is made up of four efficiency cores and 10 performance cores, what you can pick for, for the M4 Pro. And then what we also have with the GPU, this is now going up to a 20 core GPU, which is really, really amazing to see. But in comparison to what we had last time with the M3 Pro, well, we could actually pick up to a 12 core CPU. And then we also had the option of up to an 18 core GPU. So obviously there is a big difference here with the amount of cores that you are getting this time. It's the extra two on the GPU and also the CPU and also how they've also been rearranged that we're getting more performance cores as well. So this is definitely going to be more powerful than the M3 Pro. And in fact, we get to see how powerful it is right now with Geekbench 6. Look at the score difference we've got here. The M4 Pro, MacBook Pro, is absolutely amazing. It's giving us a score here of 22,088 on average of the recent sort of benchmarks that have come in here. But 22,000, that's more than M2 Ultra out there with far more cores inside of it for multi-core score. Whereas the M3 MacBook Pro, that has a score of 15,280 on average. So this is super, super impressive to see. And all of this, funny enough, is achieved by the RAM amounts. So now with the MacBook Pro M4 Pro, we either have a choice of 24 gigabytes or 48 gigabytes. This has gone up from the base amount of the 18 gigabytes that we had with the M3 Pro. And then obviously the maximum amount we could pick last time was 36 gigabytes, as you can see right here. But this has now gone up to 48 gigabytes. So this is really, really impressive to see. This are the RAM options that we can pick for now with the new M4 Pro MacBook Pro.
And now to keep the M4 Pro and also the M3 Pro, you've also got the fan inside of them. So this is really, really good. This is the advantage of having a MacBook Pro. So this is really good, whereas the MacBook Air doesn't have this. And then for storage capabilities, well, we're going exactly the same choices here. It starts at 512 gigabytes, all the way up to four terabyte as an offering here with the Pro chipsets inside of them, the M4 Pro and the M3 Pro. So this is a good amount of storage that you can pick from for your new MacBook, but both exactly the same. For operating system, we now have macOS 15, Sequoia, and both of them obviously can use Apple intelligence and all the great features that come along with that. Straight out the box now, because obviously we now do have the new macOS 15.1 now, so you can start to use some of those Apple intelligence features like the writing tools are really handy on macOS, for example. And there's obviously gonna be more kind of AI tools or Apple intelligence tools coming into the future. So this is really great to see. For battery life, both of these MacBooks offer the exact same amount of up to 22 hours of battery life. Obviously, this is the M4 Pro and the M3 Pro. If you had a Max or normal M4, it'd be different. What is most interesting though, is obviously we've got more performance cores and efficiency cores inside the M4 Pro, yet Apple have managed to keep the same amount of battery life, what is incredible to see. Then for charging speeds, well, we can go up to a MagSafe of 96 watts. You might not get that charger inside the box, but the good news is that you do have that capability that you can actually go up to MagSafe, up to 96 watts, and then obviously that can do that fast charging capability. Obviously you can also still charge by USB-C with the USB Thunderbolt ports. So this is really, really great to see, but again, exactly the same charging capabilities on either the M4 Pro or the M3 Pro model. For weight, the weight on both of these models are exactly the same or practically like within a gram or two of each other, not much in it. I'm not going to go into full details, but we're talking about 1.61 kilograms for both of these models. Really nothing in it whatsoever in weight. You're really not going to feel the difference whatsoever between both of these models. Both of the MacBook Pros have stereo speakers. This is the standard setup on this design. The six speaker system with the woofers giving some of the best kind of speakers out there on any laptop out there right now. Then for Wi-Fi speeds, a bit disappointing here. We didn't get Wi-Fi 7 in any of the new Max this time round with the M4. And it's the same here with the MacBook Pro. All we have this time is Wi-Fi 6E in both of these machines this time round. Then for the actual webcam, the new MacBook Pros, this time just like the new iMac, has the new center stage camera. It's a 12 megapixel camera. Well, it still is 1080p, but Apple says it's better in darker light conditions and things like this. So there's a bit of an improvement here, but still both the cameras are 1080p resolution inside that notch in the middle. And then for the actual price for both of these MacBook Pros, they start at exactly the same price. 1,999 US dollars. That's the base model with 512 gigabytes and the lowest amount of RAM. So this is good to see here. But obviously, like I said, the prices are exactly the same, but you can probably pick up an M3 Pro now, a bit more cheaper if you do shop around. For colors though, what we have now this time is we still have the silver and the space black. No additional new colors have been added to the range this time, but you've got the choice of exactly the lighter color or the darker color, and you can pick from either of these. And with that guys, will you be buying yourself a brand new MacBook Pro? And there we have it then. So as we saw, the main difference is that you just don't have an M3 Pro, you're going to M4 Pro. There's a few other bits and pieces as well, like Wi-Fi technology has been updated. But apart from this, literally you are paying for the new M4 Pro chip underneath the hood. What is Definitely gonna be a screamer compared to the M3 Pro. It's definitely more powerful. Personally, in my opinion, if you're still on Intel MacBook Pro, oh yeah, upgrade yourself to an M4 Pro or M4 family. Definitely do that as soon as possible because I think you need to do that. And I'd also argue now that if you're saying on an M1 or even potential of an even an M1 Pro, ones with the lower amount of cores, the bin version of that, maybe this might be the first time I would say that maybe you could upgrade. Not saying the M1 Pro is rubbish or anything like that, but if you just want to gain a bit more extra speed and actually maybe start to see a bit of a difference, then I would actually say, yeah, maybe upgrade to the M4 Pro. But obviously it's all up to you what we want to 
do. The M1 Pro is still a great machine, and so is the M3 Pro. So if you can get this on a great deal, definitely get it. If you can shop around, get at least say three or four hundred dollars off it. I'd buy this, an M3 Pro, over the likes of say an M4 Pro for that reason. But if you want the latest and greatest, the newest one, then obviously M4 Pro is the way forwards. But with that as well, guys, though, it's time to wrap up this video. So if you have enjoyed watching this comparison we've done here, make sure you press the like button and also at the same time as well, if you want to hear the latest Apple news reviews and more comparisons coming into the future, make sure you subscribe to this channel and also hit that notification bell. Until next time, guys, I'll see you really soon. Take care. Bye bye.